Hello, I'm Judgment. Let's talk about the new retribution build that's been going around lately in various forums and videos in the community, the Spelladin. First off, I would like to give credit where it's due. This build was mainly theorycrafted by Dexter Bravo and other members in the Paladin Discord. I will post links to these down in the description of this video. This video is my take and opinions on the Spelladin and how it might look in Phase 1 of Classic WoW. So what is a Spelladin, or the term that I prefer, the Spellret? It's pretty much just what it sounds like. It's a Retribution Paladin that's stacking spell damage as its main stat instead of the traditional strength or crit. We will also be using Seal of Righteousness instead of Seal of Command. Because of the lack of good spell power gear available in the early phases of Classic, the best way to play in Phase 1 and in Phase 2 will most likely be a hybrid build of spell power and attack power. And as we progress on in later phases, we will move on to more and more spell power gear into a full Spelladin. This build is going to be reliant on stacking consumables for optimal performance. This was already the case for a standard AP ret to be viable, but it may be even more important if you are a spell ret. Because of the consumable requirement, in combination with other aspects of this build, it will make it very non-casual friendly. If you want to be successful as a spell ret, it's going to require a lot of time and effort. The thing that makes or breaks the spell ret build is the manual crowd pummeler. The damage on Seal of Righteousness is static depending on your weapon's base attack speed combined with a 12.5% scaling on your total spell power. This means that haste effects are very valuable as it indirectly increases the damage gained from the spell power. As a spell red, our damage will come from Seal of Righteousness, Judgments of Righteousness, Consecration and two weapon based procs, Shadow Oil and Dragon Breath Shielding. Both Shadow Oil and Dragon Breath Shieldy have a static percentage chance to proc and no internal cooldown which makes fast attack speeds very valuable. They also scale very well with spell power. In addition, the Shadow Bolt from Shadow Oil will also get additional damage bonuses from things like Improved Shadow Bolt, Shadow Weaving, Curse of Shadow and most likely the Nightfall debuff. Let's move on to our talent specs. The first one is a standard red spec where I have added improved Seal of Righteousness. This spec will allow us to gear aggressively as a human since we only need 3% hit to be capped. As an AP SP hybrid, being hit capped is more important than it will be if you are going for full spell power since more of our damage will be from auto attacks. The spec also includes Seal of Command and Repentance which will allow us to play PvP as a normal ret if that would be to your preference. The second spec is more of a support slash healer of spec. We still got all the important damage talents in the ret tree so the only damage difference compared to the first spec will be a few missed auto attacks due to the lack of hit cap but that can be counted with different itemization if you would like. This spec will also be able to heal perfectly fine in raids and dungeons with minimal gear swapping. And now let's look at our pre-raid biz itemization and phase 1 biz. I have 3 different pre-biz builds here to show you. And I know there are some people that are very adamant in their opinion that there can only be one real pre-biz because it's either biz or it isn't. While this is true, I don't think that the real biz in this case is worth going for. It requires you to get two BOE epics that you are able to replace in already in phase 1 and they will cost you hundreds of golds to acquire. So in my opinion it's not worth getting them. 
but I will of course show you that set as well. So for the first pre-raid beast list I have here is for the Spellret Hybrid. And for the Spellret Hybrid we have Eye of Rand from UBRS, we have Marco Fordering from a quest line in the Peglands, we have Earth Slag Shoulders from BRD, we have Sprite Caster Cave from BRD, we have Plate of the Shaman King from LBRS. Battleborn Arm Bracers from UBRS, Hands of Power from LBRS, Brigham Girdle from UBRS, Sky Shroud Leggings from LBRS, Omnicast Boots from BRD, Blackstone Ring from Princess Taredras in Marodon, Songstone of Ironforge from a questline in BRD. Briarwood Reed from UBRS and Hand of Justice from BRD. And as you probably figured out, almost all these pieces are from either BRD, LBRS or UBRS. So that is the main dungeons you will be focused on running while collecting your pre-raid bits. And as for our weapon, we will be using the manual crowd pummeler in a raid environment. And while we are not killing a raid boss, we will be using another weapon, which I will get into later, because that's a whole topic of its own. The second pre-raid beast list is if you would like to go for a full Spelladin build from the beginning of phase 1 and max your potential spell power. So for this build you would start off with Spell Power Goggles Extreme Plus from Engineering. You will choose Tooth of Gnar from UBRS. Uh, there is no next with Spell Power outside of Molten Core in Phase 1. So this is the best alternative. Lead Surveyor's Mantle, BRD. Sprite Caster Cape, BRD. Plate of the Shaman King, LBRS. Battleborn Arm Bracers, UBRS. We chose these bracers because there are no bracers with spell power in phase 1. So these are chosen because of the heat rating. And also crit is also nice. Then we have Hands of Power from LBRS. Crystallized Girdle from UBRS. Sky Shroud Leggings from LBRS. Omnicast Boots from BRD. Maiden Circle, which is a BOE world drop. Uh, it will probably be quite expensive because many classes want this ring. And there are a couple of alter alternatives to get, like Cyclopean Band from BRD Arena or Band of the Unicorn, which is basically a budget version of Maiden Circle and it's also BOE world drop. For our second ring, we will have Songstone of Ironforge, which is our from a quest in BRD and trinkets we have Briarwood Reed from UBRS and Hand of Justice from Blackrock Depths. Uh, you could also swap Hand of Justice for Burst of Knowledge also from BRD if you would like an, another alternative with spell power instead. And for the third and last pre beast set which is basically a very expensive version of the first hybrid build and uh, this set has two BOE epics on it instead. So we start off with Lionheart Helmet. Then we have Marco Fordering, Earth Slag Shoulders, Sprite Caster Cave, Plate of the Shaman King, Battleborn Arm Bracers, Hands of Power, Crystallized Girdle. Then we have the second BOE epic, Cloud Keeper Leg Plates. We have Omnicast Boots, Maiden Circle, Songstone of Ironforge, Briarwood Reed, and lastly, Hand of Justice. And then if we take a little bit look forward to Phase 1, uh, after we have been raiding for a while, how does our Phase 1 BIS set look like? So we start off with Judgment Crown from Onyxia. Then we have Shoker of Enlightenment from Lucifron. 
We have Earth's leg shoulders from BRD, Saffron Drape from Onyxia, Plate of the Shaman King from LBRS, Battleborn Arm Bracers from UBRS, Hands of Power from LBRS, Crystallized Girdle from UBRS, Judgment Leg Plates from Ragnaros in MC, Omnicast Boots from BRD, Band of Akuria in from Ragnaros in MC, Songstone of Ironforge from BRD Questline, Briarwood Reed from UBRS and Hand of Justice from BRD. And I will post links to all these four sets in the description of this video so you can check them out yourself. And then let us also look at which enchants we want to use for this gear. On our head and legs we ideally want to get the 8 strength from Lesser Arcanum of Voracity, but this is quite expensive so I would recommend going for this last when you have some spare gold. For our cloak we are going to enchant uh, 3 agility because there really isn't any other enchant to get. For our chest we will get 4 stats and if you are a bit poor you can also get the budget version of 3 stats. On our bracers we will choose 9 strength. On gloves we will go for 1% haste. As I stated earlier in the video haste is very good for a spelladin because it doesn't affect the damage on seal of righteousness and we want to be able to attack as much as possible. On our boots we will take 7 agility because we do not need the extra movement speed because we already got that from talents. And when we are raiding and using a manual crowd pummeler we should always enchant the manual crowd pummelers we use with an iron counterweight that will add an additional 3% haste. And for our non-MCP weapon which we will use when we are doing dungeons and PvP and open world and all other stuff, we should enchant that with either life stealing or crusader. I cannot tell you at this moment which one is better because uh, we were not able to test it on the classic beta so we do not know uh, the proc rates and if Seal of Righteousness are able to increase the proc chance of these. But uh, I would argue that life stealing is probably better. Moving on to the rotation. So for our rotation as a spell red or a spell of the end, it's fairly straightforward. We will follow a priority system that looks like this. First we need to keep Seal of Righteousness up at all times. Uh, number two is to keep the speed buff from the manual crowd pummeler activated. We have three charges for this which will last for 1 minute and 30 seconds. Uh, hopefully we will be able to kill most bosses during this time. But of course there are some bosses that last longer than this. Um, for these fights you will, need to, you will have to swap back to your normal weapon after the charges are gone. And of course, also during some boss fight, you will not be able to stand and DPS during the whole fight. For example, Baron Geddon, you need to move out, or if you get the bomb, maybe it's not even worth using the MCP at all during that fight, because you might just end up wasting it for nothing if you can't attack the boss for a long period of time. And number three, we use our judgment of righteousness on cooldown. And number four, we use consecration on cooldown. And because of how mana expensive consecration is, you should try to only use max rank when you have the vengeance buff up. And if you don't, you should down rank to either rank three or rank four, depending on how your mana situation is looking and how long you think the boss fight will go on for. And lastly, we will use any additional damage item that we have. For example, items like a Sapper Charge, Turim Grenade or a Crystal Charge. Let's move on to consumables. 
And as I said in the beginning of this video, consumables are going to be very important in order to be successful as a Spelladin. Here is a list of all the available consumables in phase 1 that we can and should be using in raids. First off, we have the Manual Crowd Pummeler, enchanted with the Iron Counterweight. Uh, this is the main staple, the main consumable, so to speak. In order to keep the Spellret build competitive, you need to continuously farm Manual Crowd Pummelers from Numerigan. And this is also most likely the biggest reason why we won't see a lot of Spellrets in Classic because it will be very tiresome to continuously farm these over and over every week to have them for the raids. And as a general rule of thumb, you will going to need approximately one manual crowd pummeler per boss fight. But in case if your guild is screwing up and you wipe, you will probably need more if you want to have them for every try. But of course there are also other boss fights where using an MCP will not be worth it because your uptime on the boss will be too low or maybe the boss fight is too short so yeah not worth using it. The second main consumable will be shadow oil. Uh, you should have shadow oil added to your weapon at all times and this uh, also includes all the MCPs that you will be using. So you kill one boss and then you, for the next boss you need to waste another shadow oil and then you need to waste another shadow oil for the next boss and during this time you need to have your other main weapon equipped with shadow oil for all the trash etc etc and uh, yeah this will uh, probably be one of the most expensive consumables so herbing herbalism is uh, very nice to have at least on, not on your main but maybe on an old character so you can farm these yourself otherwise you are going to be continuously going broke over and over again buying these from the action house and the third consumable will be dragon breath chili it's not very expensive but the duration only lasts for 10 minutes so you were going to need a lot of these to keep it up for the entire duration of the raid then we have Elixir of the Mongoose or Greater Agility. Elixir of the Mongoose is greatly superior to Agility and it will give us approximately 3% crit in total, which is really good. And then we have Greater Arcane Elixir or the budget version Arcane Elixir, which will be our spell power Elixir, also very important. Then we have some Juju's, Juju Power, which will give us strength. And this you can easily farm from Winterfall Furbox in Winter Spring. And then you have Juju Might, which will give us attack power. And this can be formed from the uh, elite uh, Frozen Giants in Southern Winter Spring. And you can farm this in groups if you want. But it will probably be easier to farm Fire Water, Winterfall Fire Water, at the same time as you are farming Juju Power from the Furbox. So you can form two in one there and then of course you're going to need mana potions major mana potions preferably because mana is one of the most limitations of this spec so you need mana potions for every fight so this will also of course include demonic runes and dark runes which will add act as a secondary mana potion because it doesn't share cooldown with mana pots so you can use this as well one per boss there are also another few consumables as I have listed as optional down here and the first one is the flask of course and the flask is the most powerful consumable but it's also extremely expensive so unless you have herbalism and are able to form black lotuses yourself this will be probably way too expensive to use for everyday raiding unless the layering somehow makes it very easy to farm Black Lotus, let's hope not. And then we have another Juju, which is the Juju Flurry, which we can use once per boss fight for a small amount of extra attack speed if we want. And we also have the consumables, which you get from Blasted Lands, 
uh, and the strength one is the most important one for, for us from there, which is the Roids buff. Uh, this is a strength buff that will stack with all other strength buffs. And then we have Elixir of Shadow Power. This will give you 40 shadow power damage, but uh, it will only increase the damage on your shadow oils, shadow bolts and nothing else. So it's a very minor DPS increase, but everything adds up. And then we have some engineering items and explosives. So if you're an engineer, you can use those. And then we also have a few mana region consumables like Mage Blood Potion and Nightwind Soup also gives mana regeneration and it acts as a food buff. So you can also use Grilled Squid instead of that if you want, which will give you 10 agility, which is 0.5% crit. So all, all, always something. And those also have only 10 minute duration, so you're gonna need to stack up a lot of food buffs if you want to use those. So yeah, that's a lot of consumables. Of course you don't need to have all of these uh, all the time, but if you really want to be competitive and be the best you can be, then you need to farm them and have them every time, every raid. Yep. And now let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more about Seal of Righteousness. Seal of Righteousness has some interesting interactions with different weapons and other proc based enchants. We have not been able to confirm 100% on the classic beta that the uh, extra holy damage from Seal of Righteousness can proc we permanent weapon enchants like Crusader or Life Stealing, but we have been able to confirm that it can proc chance on hit effects from weapons. So at least that's something good. Unfortunately, it does not proc temporary weapon enchants like Shadow Oil or from buffs like Dragon Breath Shili. Because of the ability to proc on chance on hit effects from weapons, it could make it very powerful with certain weapons, uh, but it will mostly depend on the weapons internal cooldown and proc chance so we do not know these proc chances or internal cooldowns and there really isn't any way to data mine it because they're all on the server side so we will just have to wait and see which one turns out to be good or not but at least we can compile a list of some weapons that we think could be very good and that is what I have done in the next slide. So for the weapons that we are going to be using when we are not raiding and using our manual crowd pummeler, we have a couple of weapons. The one that looks most promising is probably Blade of Hanna. It's the uh, strongest and fastest two-handed weapon that we can get pre-raid uh, and it also has a lot of stats which is helpful it doesn't have a proc though so in case procs become very powerful together with seal of righteousness you will probably not use blade of hanna but as it looks right now blade of hanna seems very good and then we also have a couple of slow two-handers which we would usually see on normal AP Red Paladins and don't get me wrong you can still use these as a spell ret because if you remember the talent trees we picked up Seal of Command and we will still be able to do decent damage with Seal of Command because Seal of Command also scales with spell power. Two other weapons that could potentially be very powerful are Iron Foe and Flurry Axe. Both these weapons have a chance to add extra attacks and these extra attacks will also add Seal of Righteousness damage on them and have an equal chance to proc things like a normal out attack, so Shadow Oil and Dragon Breath Chili etc. So in case the 
proc chance or internal cooldown would be very low on these procs, they might turn out to be extremely powerful and even be better than an activated speed buff MCP in raids if they turn out to be really crazy. We also got a bunch of faster weapons with a damage proc and the good thing about these are that the damage proc has the possibility to crit and proc vengeance for us so we can get a high uptime on the vengeance debuff which will help us a lot with DPS as well. And lastly I also added Silent Fang there on the list which is a fast one handed weapon with a 6 second silence proc. And if you're using Seal of Righteousness and the internal cooldown on this proc is fairly low, you should be able to completely shit on healers and mages with this weapon. Uh, and it might actually be completely bonkers. So I can't wait to get my hands on one of those. Alright, that is everything that you need to know about Spellrat before we go into Classic Release. I believe that the Spellrat has a very good potential and that it will most likely be much better than traditional AP Red. Spellrat will also get better and better in later phases at more, as more spell power gear becomes available. But there is also still a lot that we do not know that could impact Spellrat for better or worse. I'm talking about weapon procs, spell power scalings, interactions from Seal of Righteousness and more. And I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please like and subscribe. And if you want to follow me on social media, you can find me on the following places. Have a good day. See you next time.